Hola community, welcome to Blender Today Every Day. It's Pablo Asquez here with another episode of seeing what's new in uh, not in Blender itself, but in the people's life using Blender every day. Today we have a special, a very special one. That's why it took a little bit longer to set up because we, for the first time ever in any Blender Today, we're actually going to see the Blender code. We're not gonna be answering like uh, what this feature, that feature is it gonna be more about the actual code. Like where, where is the interface? Where is the editor? I want to add a button in a modifier. Where are the modifiers? Where like, you know, Blender is made out of text code that you compile and then you, uh, you run it, you, ch you can change it and stuff. So if you wanna follow with this, uh, in this episode, maybe you need to compile Blender first as like the very first step, but then uh, it will be so much easier to just see and look at the code and find like a, here, this is this part, these are the libraries, these are the, um, the operators, the editors and everything. So for that, we have today a special guest all the way from a few meters away. It's Dalai uh, Quintanilla Felinto, hello. How are you? Hello, Pablo. <laughs> Hello, everyone. You're a local already. Fine. We see you. Excited about the <laughs> the idea for today. We'll try to do a bit more live, as you said, right? Yes. Some people. Doing a little bit live, a little bit of like answering in the chat, chatting with people like are here um, just in the live chat or also the questions that we have prepared for today. They are on blender.today, just as always, and you can find here. And uh, please ask your questions related to developing Blender itself. Friday is the Q&A where we're gonna be answering like the typical questions. But tomorrow, today, uh, let's keep it code related. All right, let's get into it. So I have a few questions that I made myself, just in case. I have Blender here, I just compiled the latest Blender. Um, for today, you don't need to compile the latest Blender, right? But uh... no, definitely not. We just, if we can, we're gonna try to do make a, an overview of maybe which parts of Blender relate to what. what. Does it mean when you talk about DNA, RNA? What are, are those things in the UI? Never it's nice. Maybe if someone has the code at least. They need to compile it. I have the code, code here open. I have, uh, I use Qt Creator, I have a code open. Actually, I have it open because the other day I found a typo. It was hardness in um, the hardness option for the grease pencil. And I saw, I was making a, a video showing the new feature and it was hardness. So I went in the code and I changed it and I pushed the changes and stuff. So that's as far as I get, like searching for, for <laughs> labels and changing them. So that should be, that should be easy to, to do. But let's get started. I can okay. share your screen even here. This is so advanced. Bam. And I notice you're using Qt Creator, right? Yes. What do you use? I've been using VS Code, the Visual Studio Code, you can see here. The one that's maintained, it was developed by Microsoft. So it's very, I think the, the whole Visual Studio kind of forked out. It, it's very similar to the to Visual Studio. It has yeah. less built-in debugging cap capabilities, but has so many plugins. And I've seen people using it, and then I fell in love with this whole inline called Git Lens. So you can go for any line of the code. It tells the less person person that touched touched it. Yeah. And for me, that was the sole reason to to switch for that. To switch to that. So VS Code is even open source, and if it's made by micro Microsoft, it's available in all platforms. Yeah, which is another reason for me to use it. I like to have the same effort. I, I switch between Windows and Linux. Nowadays, uh -huh. mostly Linux. But for a lot of the time, I would be using Mac as well. And so for me, it's, I always try to have a pipeline which was kind of OS agnostic. Yeah, for everything. And which one is your, would you say is your favorite to develop code? Because you use Windows, Mac, and Linux. Which one is better for coding in your... Uh, it's a bit of a cliche, but it, it was Mac, definitely. Ah. Just because it looks pretty. No, because the it has a same <laughs> control C, control V. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> so when you like okay, let's let's dive into the code, I think. Uh, so what is like the first what are the main areas in the Blender code, like in the Blender tree per se? Right. Um it's kind of funny for this particular occasion. 
I tried to open the entire tree. Oh, which bad was... idea. No, 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 it's not big, but usually the, the main development happens inside Source Blender. So Source this is the blend. entire tree here. So we have the build file, doc, extern, intern, release, sources, tests. So going from from up all the way inside. Um, doc is mainly documentation. We have some Python API examples. We have... But is that the um, Blender documentation? Is it built in Blender or is it in another repo? This is not the Blender manual, the reference manual. But this is, for instance, and the, um, the Python API, if you go to the Python API online and you see some examples over there of uh, Python scripts, they are in the bl main Blender code. Okay. So if you go to the, yeah, I know GPU is one I help to write. So all of those, for instance, this is the GPU1.py. Interesting. So this goes straight to the online Python API, ah. which means when you implement a new feature, you can make sure you have the feature and the example is committed at the same time. It's part of the same project. And uh, that is the documentation that you can find inside of Blender if you go to the help um, Python API reference. Yes, cool. exactly. exactly. Yeah. So this for docs, we have, uh, for instance, again, the same documentation. Here's where we have the introductions, the main chapters. So all the Python API technically come from here, from the Blender code as a whole. Cool. The reference manual is a, a sep separate repository. It's a separate repository, cool. And that includes the CSS, the theme, the five tick icon for the, <laughs> the Python API, all that. Wow. So that's So that's almost its own project inside the, 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 the repository. Main code. And then here, uh, let's skip doc for now. It's not so interesting. We have extern which is uh, where we have external libraries that need to be compiled with Blender. Some of them, we we have um, people just download the library in Linux or Mac or, or Windows, doesn't matter. But those we need to build with Blender. So for instance, Metaflow is here. Metaflow is not compiled as a DLL and then Blender just build with that. It's actually compiled within Blender. But Metaflow so is, Meta is, a, is a project outside of Blender. It's an independent project, but in this case, uh, Blender uses its library, so developers just get the library from the repo, get updated, and then put it into Blender. Yes, and, and manually sync it. Manually syncing. It has... It's not changing. Everything that is in extern is not changed by Blender developers. Well, it is. Um, yeah, it's not usually touched by Blender developers. Usually. But if, if something changed upstream, so if the Mentorflow developers decided to change something, and then someone has to port it back, and make sure that our copy of Metaflow is in sync with the one outside. And the other one, that's the outer space, is some is interesting, which was implemented was created by Nexion, by yeah. Joch, yeah, by Joch, 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 Joch. Yeah. Joch Müller. And again, it's a standalone project, but it lives inside Blender as well, in some way. So I guess he keep, he syncs it every now and then. Any other interesting one? Ah, Ceres uh, uh, is uh, cool. Ceres is the motion Draco tracking also, one, right? Yeah. Yes, motion tracking by, by Kier uh, and Google. Of course, have, we have Bullet, which is used for physics. We have Draco, Draco. which is the... Quadriflow. Oh, no, uh, Draco is compression stuff. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, so that, this is extern. That is Boring. extern. That, that okay. Is, yeah, okay. That probably makes Blender very heavy, <laughs> that whole folder. Uh, the source code, I mean, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe. And then we have intern, which is the lab, the part of Blender, which are treated as libraries, but are only exist within Blender with one exception, one, two exceptions, oh. which is Cycles and something else. So for instance, Cycles is here. So Cycles has its own repository, yeah. but also has its own folder. So the whole, rep so we keep this, we definitely keep in sync and we do it from Blender to Cycles not the other way around yes ah. and but we keep it as part of the intern it's supposed to be integrated with blender through a very well defined and specified api uh you think about it the same goes for outer space which we saw it in extern as well yeah we, we see it again in intern and this is in this case 
it's like just a few files, just like an interface to, to, okay, to integrate like... all the space with Blender. Cycles is the one I visited a lot, but then we have things like the Cycles. So if a developer wants to change something in Cycles, where would he change it? In uh, intern or extern? In intern. Intern. Definitely intern. Okay. In cycles. Then we also have Pixar's Open Subviv, Open VDV. We have Pixar, we, we have uh, Ghost, which is Blender on window managed system. So the the window the different window how this how we handle inputs, uh, I/O for keyboard and mouse and all that. All the key inputs are handled by Ghost. Yeah, the so window resizing, new window, all everything. Yeah, how to changing focus on window, how to take uh, keyboard input, it's all there. And for Ghost, we do have different files for for um, Windows, Mac, and Linux. Okay, for sure. Awesome. And what else? That's a flow again. Open color I/O. Open subdiv. And of course, when we mention open subdiv, is not the one-to-one -one copy of, shouldn't at least, okay. of the Pixar one. Yeah, it's not. But it's our wrapper of their library, usually. Okay. Okay, okay let's go to the, very, it, to the juicy yeah, stuff. Yeah, the juicy, <laughs> the juicy stuff. Yes, yeah, source. Then we go to source. Source, honestly, nowadays we have source blender, source tools, and source creator. Blender is, re is really the only place that matter. Creator <laughs> is where you have the, it's funny, like creator dots, I was having had this open. Creator dot C is where you have the classic main function. So everyone that coded in C at some point in their life know that the entry point of your program will be main, this yeah. main function. From this function, the whole program happens. Everything, so if you remove that, Blender doesn't run. <laughs> Anything doesn't run, it's a main. <laughs> Creator, wow, another creator, that's the name of the old So language. here we here we handle some of the inputs. So of the sort some of the command line arguments. Um, ah command line, so dash B for background or animation, they're all handled in creator.c. Yeah, uh, some of them is exactly handled inside main itself. Almost hard coded here. But uh, usually it's from here we have um, that change that change a lot. It's one of the sub, sub functions here, but just this gives like a big picture. Like from from creator .c, then you go to everything else in Blender. So everything in Blender is called from within this function. Wow. Here's the yeah. argument parsing. Delay args parse. Oh, I press something wrong. Uh -huh. sorry, 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 sorry. If I go here, you can see the function. For instance, you mentioned the background. Yeah, background rendering. Where is it? Uh, it's a. Uh, we went to fancy with this. We have uh, callbacks and everything else. It's like if, if dash b, then do something. If <laughs> usually, how how do I? If I want to know how to do how to go about that, I'd go try to get crap um, background <laughs> running background, and then I do a running background. Ah, so you basically just search for it. Yeah, which is actually creator.arguments is here. It's an own file for arguments, creators underscore arg, and then basically if and it background... is, This function is very simple. This function just prints something, but basically it's taking this, which is a global, which we try not to have a lot in Blender. So this value is shared to every single uh, you know, instance of Blender, every yeah. single sub, sub, sub So once this is set, g.background, we're gonna be checking for this in a few parts of Blender. So, if you're image-free buffer, um, if it's in background, so that is reading a file. If it's not background, paste something here, here and there. So this is so. every check that does g dot background is checking if Blender is rendering in the background. Then do something else. Then um, like uh, print something uh, when you finish rendering or yes. Okay, cool. Or for EV, we probably don't do. If it's in background, you're. <laughs> yeah, yeah light EV hack. bake, enable, disable. That sounds like a very bike hack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. All right, okay, so what is <laughs> what is in Blender itself, like the Blender folder? Because it's Blender, source, Blender. Yeah, so 
Blender Source Blender. So because before we had the Blender Player here, which was the Blender Game Engine standalone player. Yes. And we also had an uh, like an option there to build the Blender Animation Player. Ah, with the one where the... Control F11, the one that plays. Yes. Okay. Playback animation files. Yes. So so Creator was this entry point for all those standalone executable executables. But then that's why Blender is where everything that matters is. So Art. all the actual code of Blender is in source slash Blender. And then it's split into many folders. Which one are many the most folders. relevant ones? Most relevant ones. Kernel, for sure. Blend kernel? Blend kernel, blend lo uh, load loader, which handles uh, reading the file and writing the file. Okay. The editors, which is a code specific for the well, for the viewport, for the for the the image editor, the outliner, sequencer, VSC. Every editor has its own folder. Yeah. And but even like we we have object as its own folder, where we have anything that's object specific that's related to editing the data. Like so object biggest, add. For instance, object baking. For instance, the object duplication functions are here. Uh, object modifiers. Modifiers has their own folder, but anything related to vertex groups. Anything related to the vertex group that the user interface with directly. So that's something, that's why the first folder I told you, I mentioned is the kernel one. Kernel are, are supposed to be really low level routines. Yeah. Functions that they don't call almost, they don't call anything from editor. So you cannot, it's forbidden to include, to call any function from from the editors inside kernel, right? It's forbidden. It's forbidden. It, should, it won't shouldn't compile. Do it it okay. won't even compile. No. Do it, you need to do some hacks and then be vetted in the, in the patch review process. Which means editor is any operator we have. Name an operator, Pablo. Yes. Name an operator, object yes. um, um, adding. Object add. Object adding. Yeah. That's gonna be inside editor, object, and yeah, object add. And okay. here's gonna be something like yeah, monkey. How how do I add a monkey? I wanna add a new object. Oh, if you want to add a new object, it's interesting because you can of course just extend this function. Because right now, for instance, you can have a mesh, curve, meta, volume, armature, all the basic uh, types. Yeah, but this is also extended uh, via Python a lot. So in Blender itself, when you're adding objects, I think Torus is defined in Python. And... Not the monkey. Suzanne is somewhere else. Suzanne, I think, is that something else? Someone else. This is all in thing. C language. The core is in C, but I, 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 as French as Torus is not the adding Torus is not defined in C. That's Python. It's totally Python. But uh, Cycles is C++? What? C++ with a uh, Python wrapper. Okay. Python, uh, Cycles itself is fully C++ and then has a, a layer in Python that and makes sure that uh, I can talk with the rest of Blender. Okay. What is the, uh, somebody asked in the chat, what is the default scene? Is that something that is built programmatically with Blender or is something that it comes from uh, from like a default blend or gave you the answer already. <laughs> it did. It, it well, it's a, a, bit, a little bit of both. Of course, we do have the default blender. We also have the preview blender. Preview. But I'm sharing my whole thing, so I don't think I can. I can show where is the file, but I can't show the the file itself without. The preview okay. blend is the one that actually shows the preview inside of that little. I can actually maybe open the file myself here. Maybe you can show it there if you have a. Yeah, I have. I have the. I'm afraid of stopping sharing this window and then never going back to it. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> you you stay there, man. So I have, for example, here the file. I'm gonna share the screen. So the the um, file is in. Uh, then, then we have to go back to Blender because this file actually is in release, right? Data files, and then preview yeah, so to Blend. I said that most of the files are in source Blender, but all the icons, all the UI files, all the phone files, 
they're all in this uh, different folder, which is the release data files. And this is where you find the preview.blend, the default. I forgot the name of the default one. A startup.blend. Startup.blend. Yep. Startup.blend is the one that is actually going to run when you start Blender for the first time. And Blender comes with one, but you can also use your own. I remember one of the, yes, yes. One of the first things that I did when I was a, a kid on my own Blender is I changed one of the preview files, like the, the one some of the spheres, with one of my characters. And uh, it was super fun, actually. <laughs> you have your own. So you basically have to change. If you know how to compile Blender, you can do that already. You just need to open the file that it's in and uh, in the Blender source slash release data files preview.blend. Change some of the object. Don't add new ones because it might not be added. Now I think they're handled by collections, so maybe it would be easier. But don't add too many details in your mesh because it's going to make it easy, hard, right? Or it's going to make it heavy. Yeah. But yeah. Well, the, the other thing is because most of the startup changes come from startup.blend, but even we try to avoid updating that file often. Yes. So we also it's... have a file which is versioning. Versioning. We have a few. We have a few versioning files. Have you ever opening in, open any of those? Versioning. Which is versioning two hundred eighty. No. This is the file that accounts for what should happen if you hold an open blend file. Okay. So something from two point seven. So something for two point. This is already the one we only for two point eight changes. And so the this... entry point. Many um, of, for example, in the case, so if there is a new property for a collection that it doesn't exist in older files, this is where you will say, okay, if the blend file that I'm loading doesn't have that feature for collections, for example, I don't know, there is a new color collection, um, then you need to come here and set it to a default value. So that would be the case. Yes. So every time, for instance, someone added a new option, which is to show F curves for the space sequencer, the VSC, right? The VSC ah, yeah, the other editor. day, yeah, added it today, just two weeks. And that was Campbell two days ago. Yeah. Uh, fix the F curve sequencer versioning logic, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you look to the commit itself, uh, it's going to show that it, cha it, it changed a few files, it added a new flag value for the, for the new sequence strips. Strip. But what to do with the old? sequence strips, right? So this is basically saying, okay, go over every single screen, and for every single screen, go over every single area, every single editor that's iterating over the data, right? And for, for everyone that's actually a sequence editor, yes. make sure the current value is show F curve. So you have to go per screen. You can't access directly the data or that's... Why, why would uh, you have there's... to do Because the... This setting is stored in the editor. In the editor view, so like in the way you see the editor. It's like that's a view. Why. It's like a viewport. It's like a viewport. Viewport option. Viewport option. So that's why you have so to it's access not per strip. Yeah. Okay. That, those are confusing. It's yeah. not a data block. If it was a data block, I could just skip that view setting and just go via data block. Yes. Uh, this is an example for a data block. Uh, we changed. We what we did here. Yeah. We. I think there was a new. 10 days ago, there's a fix here. Strength. And this fix means it blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, but now we modifier. have a new default settings for strength. Yeah, for, for the this surface, uh, surface modifier, got a new option for strength and vertex group. Yes. And, and this then is setting it to one. We have we have a few places. We are trying to, to unify this because for a time, there'll be like a few places where it set a new default value. But anyway, you'd always need to go back to the old files and, and say, okay, now for the old file, make sure that this is the value. Okay, interesting. And there's a trick here that we, here we are comparing the version of Blender. Yeah. Here we're actually saying, if you look, it's, it's more like look at the blend file itself. And if the blend file did not have this value, it means it's an old file. Yeah. And then proceed as Makes expected. Sense. Okay. Don't edit this. So, and don't add it that. Mm -hmm. Wow, how old He's is... one that taught me about that. But, he... uh, but nowadays we did so many cleanups, which is hard to tell. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. So, okay, another uh, little example, like if I want to add a new theme setting, for example, where would I go? 
20 places. Things, I know, thing is very, it's very simple, right? Thing, That's what I'm asking. <laughs> and I then we can know. go back to reading the, the, what is inside of the folders. I believe, honestly, I don't even know where to, where we sort of themes. Theme settings. But it's, it should be, it's, it's in data file. It should be in release. Well, ser search for file. a theme setting, maybe. Roundness, for example. Scripts. Presets. The... Presets, that's where the... A startup. Startup. So it's around here. Yes. I usually, I, but usually I go, I go like this. So these all DNA stuff or yeah, these there iron? Go. Okay. There. Because I mean, if I have the other ways, I have my own ways of searching stuff. <laughs> I don't usually use this. Uh, using preset interface theme, Blender Dark. So those are added the same way we add add ons or, or oh, sorry, different presets or key maps. Key maps. They're standalone files that live inside the scripts folder so script presets and, and then you interface have theme oh, okay yeah and there you go dark and light it was right in my face in your face all right so back to the folder so now we are inside of editors and okay. here we've seen some um for example the object add for the operators there is there is also render operators right like render ops underscore ops is it is it like a convention for all the operators Yes, we try to, to have them, not where we implement them necessarily, but we try to have them um, declared, Declare, so we know okay. where to go to. Okay, so there is a one place where you can see all the operators, and then you can like, uh, it depends on what you're using, usually you can control click, and then you go to the definition of that operator. Yes. In this case, something some render shading or... Render shading, something that's interesting is that if someone is already has already created a few Blender add-ons, Python add-ons. Yeah. They should be able to recognize a lot of the structure here. For instance, the exact, the poll function, so and the invoke function. So this is an operator. How, how does an operator look in, in Z? In C. In C. Yes, OT uh, name, very... operator name. So we have a few, so this is what an operator is. It's a, a class is a bunch of data here. Sorry. Yes. So it has like its own name and a unique ID name, something to be translated. The two tip. Yes. This is something that's not used a lot to undo group is whenever you want a few operators to be counted as one. We do this for instance for changing frames in the timeline. They're grouped together. And uh -huh. then we have a few callbacks, which are functions which we say, okay, whenever we want to execute this operator, call this function. Whenever you want to invoke, which is when you call it from the from the menus, uh, call this function instead. If this operator is cancelled, call this function. Okay. If this operator is running as a model, which means it's not running and stopping running, but it's continuously running, call this function instead. So this is, and then, so when you're creating a, an operator, it is very simple because just take an existing one and duplicate it. In <laughs> Usually, yes. Yeah. In the code. And then you have it working. So, so for instance, this one, we have the name. This is the un like a, a more identifier, unique identifier, which you use when you're calling from Python, the tooltip. And these are the, the callbacks we're talking about. Oh, instance, okay. Execute, which is exactly what happens when you call this operator. Interesting. Okay. And then let go back to the, to the actual operator. It's the name of the operator is important that it's clear. Because this is what's going to show, uh, like some operators in the user interface or buttons or labels have a different name or like text there because it's more convenient for the view. But if you're going to search for an operator, if you use search, that's the name. The label is the actual name that you're going to see. And also when you use undo and other internal. Just, just... I think it's hmm? the name is what it shows everywhere. Right? And, and even though sometimes in the UI you can change it. Yeah. I just saying, if you're using an icon or whatnot, the name is important to be. That it's nice. clear. Yeah, that's why sometimes if people see here like add material slots, but in the user interface it's just add or just a plus icon, then this is why. Um, yes. We have questions from people. 
blah, blah, blah. Get the debug information. Why the command option first when I open Blender? What's the motif? Why the, the command line opens first when I open it? I think we, we talked about it in the episode with Breck two weeks ago. Yeah, but it's pretty Because it's important. <laughs> so we have the editors. As I mentioned, we have like yes. every single thing. Uh, for the, out the outliner is entirely defined here in the space outliner. Okay. And again, we, we and, and following the same rule, we have the outline ops here. And we even have the key map defined here as well. Everything. And for instance, we have one function only, one file only for Outlander collection related functions. Yes. And that's uh, so the, the, the editors, they, they are, I consider them like the interface with the users. And then they would be ac accessing more like the low level uh, in interface of Blender itself. Because the interface of like in Outliner, you have Outliner draw. Is that where the Outliner is, is drawn? Because there is also interface folder. What's the difference? Well, Outliner is a bit of a weird case because I don't think we have any 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 Python interface file, right? Ah, uh, no, so yeah. Most of the interfacing most of the interfacing Blender is defined in Python files, and if you ever try to do an add-on, you probably have to like tweak some of the Python files or extend the existing ones, or and even in, in but in for the Outliner, the interface is I think almost entirely. Uh, defined. I can check here. Um, do you see outliner here? I don't. Think no, I so. outliner I... is everything in C. Outliner dot uh, underscore draw is maybe where you're gonna see, like where um, row is defined or the icons maybe. Yeah, we have a few. We have very light um, <clears throat> Python Use layer of the outliner. Yes. To 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 set up the menus, to set up the a few buttons in the UI. But then we have things like uh, outliner, 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 set flag. So this, for instance, is the callback. Whenever you click on the little icons, yeah, we call the restrict restrict icons, right? The visibility, the selectability. This is what happens. This is what this is the implementation of this. This kind of bot shouldn't necessarily be in the drawing function. In the sequencer, no. So but this is. This is the draw code for the for the outliner. Okay, so people are asking, what is BKE at the beginning? Blender kernel. Blender kernel. Kernel. Blender kernel. What is Remember ED? We, Sorry. We thought we said that the the editors is supposed to use the code from the kernel. So those files here we see, for instance, BKE sync. This is the header. So when you have the header means these are the functions that are available in the in the code itself to be used elsewhere. So, so those them, are all the functions that we can use outside. You, you put outside them the there. Kernel. You put them there so you can reuse them everywhere. Yes. Actually, Hans Goody is on the chat. He answered already. ED is for editor, UI for interface, DNA stuff that saves in file. Thank you, Hans Goody. He's working now currently on a um redesign slash refactor of how the modifiers are drawn yeah and then he did the bevel custom profile custom profile last year in the google summer it's awesome and a great presentation at the blender conference last year i'm preparing the plan b here <laughs> and so we have the the kernel one thing i think it'd be nice to show is the dna dna yeah what is like dna what is DNA? DNA is just the is a name for the Blender data structure. Yes. So, for instance, when you have whenever you have the the object, for example, we have DNA underline object. The object one. Ah, like the object. Um... The object. The object. Fine, Blender. <laughs> nice. It's ASCII art up there. Oh yeah, that's. Uh... Really? People asking about the uh, extensions in VS Code. I can talk about that shortly. Yeah, at so the end, I think there's questions. Uh... Yeah, we, at the end, we, we take those, those, those questions as well. So, like, for instance, the name, of course, of the object is here. Name is a special case. But let's say the object is here. We want the object to have... Oh, the proxy, for instance, is here. The, the old action was here. This was... Ipo, yes. 
interpolation. That's the name that uh, that Ton gave to the interpolation curves or slash actions. Lisa mod fires are here for the object. So the DNA, the, the DNA is actually is a header file for the proper header file that has to be compiled. But this is actually the thing that defines what it goes inside a blend file. And the blend file itself it stores its own copy of the of all the DNA when you save it. Which means it's no it knows exactly uh, which settings it had at the time of creation. That's why you can compare the thing we showed earlier, like okay, when this file was created, did it even have this concept of modifiers? No? Oh, so go and create an array modifier as default. So that's the DNA, is the 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 body like and the dna of an object grows with every version but also gets why there is still the ipo why is it not deprecated why can't we just remove it for so we can handle uh, opening old old files and to do something with them okay. we can still open if you were to remove it it wouldn't be a problem but any file that was created probably to what 2.4 this yeah. case is probably fine <laughs> Probably before. Yeah, it's here, like old animation system deprecated for 2.5. Any file that was before 2.4 would yeah. be with no animation at all. So this is DNA. And what is RNA? And then on top of that, we have an uh, abstraction layer, which exposes every single of those settings in a way that people can access from Python. So let's take, for instance. So RNA was shader. added to access this is this was added in blender 2.5 i'm not wrong right so we can RNA access is part of 2.5 is actually which part of the idea was that every part of blender should be able to be exposed in the ui and there should be no distinction between what is a feature implemented in python and something implemented in the core of blender exactly so, like making python stuff in 2.4 is almost impossible it was possible but it was not nearly as easy as 2.5 and onwards so we have then the same way we had the, the, the I'm open here, DNA object. And then, so the, the RNA of the object is where every single property of the orbit object is. So for instance, lock scale is defined here. Lock scale. Or, like the, the transform, like where is the location of an object or like modifiers or like anything this is also is it tooltip as well it... tooltips and the data type i'm trying to find the locations probably the first one rotation, uh, rotation there location. So this location for instance define so what is, is the, that this is the two so this is how we define a new property that someone can access via python okay so it says location prop float and prop translation yeah. what is that so Translation is, oh, here it means it's going to be treated as a float in the UI. So it means it's not an integer, it's not a boolean, it's not a collection. Or a enum, which is a menu. Yes. Or a string. Or a string, a which is just a text. So a float is a number with a number like with a fraction, like 1.5, 1.2. Okay. Translation is, the, is a subtype, which is going to tell how do you want it to be presented in the UI. For instance, if it's velocity, we want to show it with meters, meters yeah. per second. If acceleration is square meters per second. Color, we want to show it as a special button. Special button, but also for like pixels, like something is in pixels or in units or in any anything really, just so it looks nice <laughs> in the UI. And then we, this is something that should be avoided. Sometimes this is actually optional at times. But the beautiful exit. This is how to map the setting in the DNA to the RNA. So if you look here, here lock. So this lock here is a matrix, a float. So it's like X, Y, and Z, right? Yes. And this is saying, okay, map this lock to this uh, human readable va uh, value. Okay lock with capital lock and it's not location capital lock no it says loa oh no sorry my my no, 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 no. site lock so this is map one to one if you change it there you have to change it also in where you define 
and everywhere. <laughs> <It's a change. laughs> yeah, you break the planet because it's it's being used everywhere. And then we have things like, of course, the simple things like the so how it's shown label. in the UI. So the text and the tooltip. This is the UI range. So if someone's dragging, how far it goes. And have the soft range and the hard range. This is very again. If someone's doing Python add-ons, a lot of these are gonna sound very, very familiar. Yes. And then you can you can also have like a um, property a function that's called whenever this property is updated. So in this case here is usually. Uh, and what is that? Is it you're up. telling Blender that okay when I change this value, do this, which could be update the interface or update the materials or tell the dependency graph to update or something like that yes or make sure it's still synced with another setting make sure and everything goes here in this case it's a dna so just tell the rest of blender that you need to recalculate the bounding box of this object or not the bounding box in this case but where this object is and whatnot interesting all right so that is with the rna basically a way to map those or to expose settings and pre and and label everything pretty much um operators are they also there mm, operators not not the way you mean it we do have some functions there and these are we are in the we are in the rna object file yeah. right yeah but if you go to the api file and we have this for a few data types then you have a few functions so for instance if you do the select is one of those object api so in blender you can do object dot select set those are defined here this is not operator though okay and for operators are not defined here they are defined just as we showed with the, if you go to the object you're uh, gonna see ops. it and you can think yourself these these already make sure it's uh, defined and 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 available everywhere this one actually yeah. cool questions questions well okay let's uh, do you see something in the chat that you want to answer otherwise we can just move into the questions thread which is also I just, I just want to quickly show my extensions oh yeah sure asking what what is it what because do you use Compared to so, vanilla. The things I use a lot. So a lot of these I ask Sergey, hey Sergey, what do you use? Because he was the one using VS Code for everything. So the main ones are the Git lens, which shows the one that shows in the inline what uh, who did the last change in the code. You use Clank format a lot. What is that? Which means if I change part of the code, okay, let me do. It tries to alt format. Yeah. So if I'm adding, for instance, let's say, oh, this is impossible. Let's say I like to have my functions in line. I like the long lines of functions. Okay. Yeah. And whenever you save it, it's going to change back to the Blender <laughs> code style. <laughs> so everything's more unified. So we use this a lot. We use the C++, C++ IntelliSense. Just things to autocomplete. Yeah. Just take a screenshot to be fine. All right. And those here. Thank you. Uh, right. Okay. Let's uh, let's jump into some of the questions from Blender, from the from Blender today, the community site, where I will I will skip just a heads up. I'm gonna skip the questions that are not related to actually developing Blender, but the typical questions that we get every day. I think uh, it's it's difficult because we always do the other kind of live streams together, the ones where we answer all kinds of questions, but let's focus more on how to bl develop Blender itself. So um, what are some big technical depths that Blender code has? Just related to code. Oh, there's a, if you go to the code quality task, you can find a few of them. One of them I think we even showed here is this a mismatch of names in the RNA and DNA. Ah. Those are those are small. We have. Uh, but it's getting better, right, with the code quality. Uh, if you go, it, there are a few ways to find it. If you go to the wiki, you can find it as well. But if you go to development management, I think you can find it. Development management. Okay. Now let's just just do now. Are, are we still uh, doing I the? There's a big refactor. There's one of big one is 
right now it's really complicated to add a new modifier. You need to mm -hmm. touch everywhere, like eight different files. So we are working on having this more streamlined. Um, it means uh, every area would have its own uh, technical depth. Its own depth, technical least. depth. Are you still doing the tracker core view? That's a pretty good question because we need to have an official answer for that. Uh, we are still actively working on fixing bugs twice a week, every single developer. Two days so, per week. Yes. So two days a week. And some of developers do rather like alternate between bug fixing week and development week, which is fine. But then all in all, we still committed to dedicate almost half of the development time for the tracker. For That's a fixing. lot. That's a lot. But yeah, but polishing is uh Polishing is one of the big missions for Blender for this year and then moving forward. Forward. All right. So we, but we do need to wrap up the the, the curve through as, as as it was because the number not going down enough. So we either need to consider everything not a bug or come up with something. Okay. Next question is why Blender is slow. So next question is, um, okay. Damian says, um, here. I know one is a. Uh, Nice. Thank you for all your hard work. That's for you and amazing skills. Um, like the why Blender is slow. Why I don't know how to reply to that. It's just loading a texture, depends, for example. It's too vague. It depends if you're talking about file loading. If you're talking about compiling uh, the shaders. The editing, if you're yeah. talking about it's too vague. Can be anything. And it was about file loading, but there are so many. It's it's just hard to like. It's not just loading a file. It's like updating the UI. It's so many areas. The next and, and one. Sorry. There is just a small thing. There's a something which is actually the actual speed that takes and the perceived speed. Because if Blender was to load the file without lo locking the UI entirely, and things would be calculated under the hood. Yeah. Maybe the perceived and speed would be a bit different. So. Yeah, you can fake it as in loading, like showing the UI responsive quickly, but then delaying, like doing other things, like lazy loading other stuff. Um, so yeah. Okay. Next is. Um, it's a comment by Damien says, I always have a long list of little improvements of Blender in my head, for Blender in my head. And I understand that it's very naive to expect every single of them to be implemented anytime soon. That's why I need to learn how to code Blender on my own. It's always a good thing. The bad thing yeah. is that I'm not a good at programming. I have very low programming skills, although I try to change some fun functions, poke some variables or constants and see what's happening or even implement some simple modifiers. There's no way to implement a simple modifier, it's as like you said, uh, it's gonna like you have to touch many areas of Blender. So, um, I would say it's it's probably one of those self-contained projects which is yeah maybe. probably easier to do. I never I think I never did the modifier. Uh, I did actually the triangulate modifier. No. So the question is, is it possible uh, of getting some simple advice or comments directly from someone from the developers team while I'm getting familiar with the Blender code? Any tutorials? How to code for Blender? Tutorials? No, I think this is the closest to a tutorial ever. For a for a C, I mean, C code. The, the, there is a few documents you can find online on the Blender wiki. Maybe something would be nice for, for, for us to show the wiki for developers. People are asking. And uh, you can also use a dev talk to start sharing your progress and try to get ideally feedback from the other from other aspiring developers such as yourself. Yeah. Before, before adding a, a bit more burden to the core team. Okay. The are you gonna do some changing with the audio? It's working great. Don't touch. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it was working great, but anyway. Um, next uh, is uh, okay. Yeah. So if there are any tutorials and people in the chat are actually asking, uh, asking for a tutorial on how to add a modifier, do you think it's even possible? We could we could do it in one of yeah. these. We could try. Yeah, we we could do it. I think we could do it live. Mm -hmm. So we just need, we need a more preparation. Yes. Probably boring to do it like you know, on flying like it was a modifier and then I'd probably go for the triangulate modifier because it's the one I, I worked once. Triangulate. <laughs> and All right. Blah, blah 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 blah. Okay. Next um, question is um, make a video with enterprise. <laughs> um, that would be fun actually to do probably. Yeah, what can, what can we talk about? Like, I don't know, except because it makes a tutorial about all everything. But maybe we can talk about everything. 
But uh, you know, with some other, I can talk about VFX with uh, Ian yesterday, or with nodes, with uh, uh, Mantisa or weird stuff, um, loops, um, donuts. <laughs> Uh, next, okay, the question is, I have recently started developing add-ons using Python and I'm planning to learn C slash C++ this summer. My two questions are, what are the best resources for beginning to develop Blender using C, C++ for someone like me? Well, it's really, it goes for everyone. So, try, to think, yeah. try to find something you'd like to see in Blender, even for fun. So if you're a modeler, maybe it'll be as I mentioned, like would like to, to see some modifiers. So in other words, try to, to start small, try to create one new operator, especially if you're already doing Python, right? Yes. Yes. Maybe try to, I'll, in your case, I'll definitely try to take a Python add-on and try to port it and make it a Blender defined operator. That's that's, uh, that's a very nice, uh, nice one. Try to find, um, or maybe an operator that already exists. Or, or like an add-on, like the copy attributes add-on, like try to implement it in C or that kind of stuff. Um, but also there is the quick hacks um, task, right? Is that still relevant? We plan to rename it one day in our lives. Okay. And no, no, it's got the name is a bit uh, misleading. We still have a list of low hanging fruits. That's a good place to start. You can also go to the tracker. We have nowadays like 700 confirmed bugs if you go over the low priority ones you're guaranteed that no developer is looking at them it's a good place to start try to fix those small low priority bugs and hope that they're not too complicated shouldn't be which why the kick hacks helps it was like a tagging we, this we don't have it as well as we would like to have okay next um, question thank you it's um, when developing Blender, what language do you use more? C, C++ or Python? So mostly C for C. almost all of us. Uh, if you're using, if you're doing mostly cycles, that's C++. The dependency graph is C++. Over time, the new things, we, we are doing a lot of C++, like Metaflow, I think it's mostly C++ as well. Do you think but every every new code will be C++ from now on or sticking to C? No, 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 no. There's we do, Sega is kind of sometimes propose this to modernize Blender in a way, but I don't think it's gonna happen. What about the functions branch? Do you know which, uh, what is using? Like everything nodes, do you know what it's using? It was, it was a lot of Python and C++. Oh, okay. So if one day everything becomes nodes, then we might see C++. But just, but just to be clear, the use we do of C++, the way my perception, it's still very basic. So if you come from a C background, you have no problems um, getting your head around. It's not like super advanced things that no one under understands. No, virtual tables, remapping, no, no, it's very basic. Okay, cool. And areas maybe in Blender that don't probably won't even benefit of having C++, I don't know. Things that are more static, I guess, or don't, not really, I don't know, intensive. Uh, the DNA, I think the DNA is going to be safe for the rest of our existing <laughs> lives. Next uh, question is as where should I learn how to write a shader that runs with GPU? A shader node that runs with CGPU, but does a it mean like an, an existing one in Blender or? Shader node. We don't have shader nodes. We have uh, like open, open shading language OSL. But I think maybe it's, uh, th there is GLSL in Blender as well, right? There's plenty of GLS, GLS. Oh, the whole EV is GLSL. The whole EV is GLSL. So like all the drawing to... in the, the, the in the overlays, for example, is that GLSL? That's GLSL. One day, like if you're looking for one, look at the um, the orientation, like for front or back orientation. That one is very nice. I saw it once. Ah, the face uh, dots. That face dot. That's super cute. <laughs> there. But this is the vertex color. This is the vertex shaders. Like pathetically simple. Yeah, super Based, simple. Easy uh, to understand even for GLSL, and that's how you make your own. Have you, so have you done have... any of this? Sorry? Have you done any of this? Have you touched them, any of this? Yeah, yeah, some of them. Not, not a lot, but definitely some of them. What is that? Line dash form. I did some of the, da the line dashing one day in Blender. Because in the beginning of the EV, I was quite involved, like hands-on with the coding. 
with uh, Clement, of course, leading the way. But uh, we ha I had some of them for stereoscopic as well. Is this the one you? This is the thing I work, but then I, I, if you see here, like Clank Former, so a lot of these. Ah, yeah, it's lost. Uh, who made it? So here, for example, how do you even like find one that you like the the face dot? That's super simple. The the one you had before. Uh, this one is this one's pretty simple as well. This is the stereoscopic merge. Ah, for you, it's simple. You made it. I think this was a uh, item recently, but we had a different implementation at some point. This is basically this is how we draw the interlacing. Yeah. Which is we draw the left and right image alternating the different lines. But this is not a shader node, but still is a it's a, it's a shader that runs in the, in the entire viewport. And what this shader is simply doing is if blah, 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 we don't draw it. So which means we draw the left eye. And then on top of this, we, try, we draw the right eye filtering, escaping every other line, which is what it's doing here. That's, OK. Uh, it's, it's simple, sorry. But, no, but it's not very is for, simple. It, it's actually the simpler, the better, just to see, to understand, like, what is you define here the variables. What is in and out, for example? Uh, that's the standard jealous, jealous, jealous cell code. In and out is in is the parameters going to send to the shader, and out is what's going to come coming out of this. In this and case, the quarter. So in this case, we're taking the vertex coordinate coordinators of a square, of a rectangle, whatever polygon, and then we're mapping an image to it. This is real. This is like vanilla jealous. This cell is super basic. Polygon. This is for uh, drawing a square image. Yeah, and then often we would have a vertex shader and a fragment shader side by side. So one define how we want to handle the vertices and the other one how we want to draw them. And then we have an output from the vertex shader that's read, that, that's reading the fragment shader. And there's a big of a problem because we then we try to reuse the same shader for different cases in Blender. And sometimes you don't really need every single parameter and might work fine in the AMD, but might break in NVIDIA or vice versa. Uh -huh. Yeah, happens so all the time. It's a headache. <laughs> all right, so uh, this, is, this is super. Just so this is super, super straightforward. This is the saturation. Saturation. Let's see what the saturation look like. So saturation, <laughs> and let's see if I can understand. Okay, so you declare, uh, you make a little uh, float factor, and then you get as input the coordinates uh, of a texture, and your output is a color, fragment color. Uh, then you define the color and sample. Sampler to the image. Nope. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. No. It's yeah. Uh... And then the main. Main is where you actually do the things, and then you get the texture, which is you you load the texture from the like image and the coordinates. Then you change RGB of it, and then there is one hard coded values. <gasps> I think in this case it's it's fine. It's just a third because it's R, G, and D. Yes. So we're adding all sense. three values. Oh my god, it's very primitive. <laughs> You're adding all three values. And dividing by three. Makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, because there are many different ways of doing the saturation. Yeah. But this is all that you're doing: just taking red, adding red, blue, and green, and just dividing by three. By the factor, to... yeah, and the factor is what you control in the. It, it factor just outside. here is multiplying by factor, and here is doing one minus factor. So, mm -hmm. if factor is zero, all you get is the original RGB color. Yeah. If factor is one, all you get is this, the saturation. Brilliant. Brilliant. And I just in one minute to explain the actual question. If you want the GPU shader node, any nodes that we have for EV or cycles. They have our GLSL implementation, and ideally also, you know, a render implementation for cycles. So that's how we do it. Every node. Every node. For so yes. everything that it works in EV, you have every node. Yeah. Just for instance, just like I don't know RGB curves or which one? Color, like RGB curves, just to or a mix node or something. I mean, you can also do shader to RGB or. If you want to make it complex, okay. principal shader. Yeah, no, I've, I've tried, I was trying to pick the saturation one because we, ah, yeah, we, we just saw it. Yes, we saw it. And 
Where are you now? No remember. shader, hues at value. Yeah, but this is still C code. The JLS code is defined elsewhere. I don't remember. It should be on. We have like. Anyway, we have a JLS function with all of this. If I remember correctly, we just have like one single library file with every single node. Anyways. Anyways, I want to continue with the questions. Just so mm -hmm. we get them. Um... And, and I just found that's, that's that was a function, sorry. Just so I know. Oh, wait, wait, wait. And let me put it on full screen again. So, where is it? It's an interface layout. Is it pure shaders material? GPU shaders ah, sorry, materials that's yeah, and then the GPU material shader one. GPU shaders materials and then GPU shader the name and very well organized and then you get uh, HSV zero one for each one of the arguments and then the implementation itself and which we need to care about my point is just that for we do for those nodes we have uh, we're just gonna sometimes you'd have uh, like a C implementation of it. Awesome. This one here and the other one. Yep. All right. Thank you very much for the very nice explanation. Uh, let's continue. The um, next question goes like um, Where do I learn about C side of Blender? Here on Blender today. Blender well, today, every day. Uh, is there anywhere on no, in the code itself? Like any, anywhere, sorry, on uh, like the wiki? Wiki, not though. to learn about C, no. You're, you're expected to learn. Do you C. have to arrive to Blender knowing some C? But there is a new yeah. developer um, introduction um, in the wiki. We're here on the new developer introduction where you can see the developer overview, advice, environment, commit access, and tasks for new developers. I think you want to start with the overview and then get some advice just so you can know where to where everything is happening. Next uh, question. Hi, Pablo and Dalai. Please, I was pleased to note some posts about coding on the Blender YouTube channel. Will it be a recurring event? What about the live streaming concerning coding? Like this. Yeah, or maybe live streaming actually trying to. Yeah, actually I mean, code. It's, it's, it depends on how people respond to that. So let's see. Like, give it a thumbs up to this video. And if you want to know, or even leave a comment, that the comment is even better if you want to do it. And if it maybe works, maybe we can do it, a, I don't know, a weekly event, one day a week, every two weeks, have a coding day where we get either you or some other developer to, to actually code a little thing. And then I ask questions from the chat. That would be cool. Get, leave a comment, please. That's the only way to know. Comments, comments. Next question. It's a what is the limit of Python? I mean, for what kind of task is mandatory C++? <laughs> C++ is not mandatory, I think, for any part of Blender, but C or C++, let's read them together. Uh, Python would have some problems with performance if it's doing really, really heavy lifting, but often we'd have Python to usually for the interface or to call then implement that's something that's implemented in C and C++. Okay, for no. example here, I would like to take action on the modifier stack. Is it within Py the Python scope? Implementing no, drag oh, Wait, sorry. Because it says implementing drag and drop, for example. That is actually being worked on by the developer that was here on the chat before, Hans Goody. He's working together with uh, William Reinish, the, the UI developer no, slash artist designer working on the new modifier stack which <laughs> i mean it might come at the same time as blender uh, as a uh, modifier nodes so no 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 no, no? it's gonna come sooner okay <laughs> uh it's just funny like i mean they, it's taking them a few weeks something that i wish it was, it was done before but uh you mil porte please check that branch maybe you can join forces and see what they need and maybe um work, work together Whatever is needed, so we can have it earlier. And and if it's not too big, is th that's not something I could fit into 2.83. No, it's a big change of it's UI. Change. That. Okay, big next. Concept. Thank you. Next uh, question: Will everything nodes act as a visual scripting framework to customize Blender or develop new tools? Mm, no. No, I'm trying to think about blueprinting. We uh, have seen once. Uh, no, that's not the goal. It's all right then 
the question i think it is not even related to code is why blender developer team don't don't like architecture and engineering <laughs> they didn't have any <laughs> tools it. and plug he like the lie here the developer here above me he is an architect how much yeah, how closer do you want but maybe you're saying because it doesn't have this tool or that tool and it's not for architecture it's for every like this comments applies to everybody that says why blender doesn't do x in like the thing i love why they don't yeah. pay we attention make no to... distinction we make no distinction regarding their education Features. background so. yeah like the precision drawing 3d printing why blender is not the best 3d printer why is not like the best vr or why is not the best video editor blender really that that question can apply to it's not a question but that comment can apply to anything next question this is a very nice one hey can you explain how to install a patch for an experimental build like you can find on developer.blender.org yes i can uh, or maybe you can point blender? you do right Pablo. Yeah? i build you, my own you... blender and i yes i have a, actually Archi arcanist so i can even yeah. show it here so I'm in the source code. Well, hmm, I'm gonna do this. I'm not gonna compile, but let's see. For example, let's go to uh, the rock star Pablo Dovaro. How is it, Pablo DP six or something like that? Yes. And there's one that's seven three seven two. Okay, even Some better. Two. So seven Some three seven two. No. Multi race and subdivide. All right. So for example, D seven three. So once you find the the patch that you wanna apply. That you say, oh, this is awesome, this is by Paolo, and it was added recently. That's important because it means that the code is kind of fresh. So uh, you have to install Arcanist. Arcanist, you install it super simple. And uh, you just, you can do it, well, I don't know, in, in Windows, but uh, you you install Arcanist. APT install. It's, it's basically, you go, the first part is you need to know how to build your own Blender. For this, you can just yes. go to the official Blender wiki page. Yeah, many steps. Learn, yes. build your own Blender installed uh, arcanist because it makes it easy it's really a one line and then i mean you can also do it the other way around let's do it the other way around as well you can basically just um download the raw diff this is gonna um show you the diff the actual code which you can literally just like save as and put it um put it anywhere for example let's make a folder here and do blah 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 let's add it in I don't even know where I have Blender here. But anyway, I'm going to save it in pictures, blah, 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 diff. And this can be anything, like anything. Dot diff or whatever. And then you can basically here just... Uh, first, I'm going to move that file, which I had it before. Um, you don't have to move it, but I like to have it around. So I'm going to move that file that was in blah, blah, blah. And it was here. And I'm going to move it here to the root. So I have it next to all my files. And here I can just basically apply that, right? Git apply. Yes. And then... I was trying to reply to questions in the chat. And then That's you just cool. do on your source, you can do git apply and it's going to apply the file. So you do um, enter and bam. Now, if I do a git diff, this is my, my difference. Git status. Now this is what it was changed. So I have the patch, now I just need to compile. So I just do like uh, make basically with all the all the cores that you have. And that's it, that's git apply and then you apply that file. There is also another way of applying that patch. If I, for example, and now I wanna reset, uh, reset uh, to head hard because it's, I don't, I don't care to lose all my changes. And the other way is by using Arcanist. Arcanist is super simple because once you have it set up, which is, like I said, installing, then you just need this number, D7372. So if you do arc, um, arc patch, and then the name of the, the number of the, of the task, it's gonna make a... Ah, I don't have it installed. Oh no, I have to install it then. You don't have... Oh, I, if they show my screen, I can show here. Yeah, well, I didn't have it installed. I had it installed at, uh, at uh, work. But not here, I forgot that now my home is work. Um, anyway, so Arcanist, once you have it installed, you do Arc patch and it's gonna make a branch, a new branch locally, not pushing it to Blender, with that patch, which is, makes it so convenient because you can just basically um, um, 
actually I need to install the certificate. Just just share my screen. I can show here too. Okay, yeah, that's much easier. <laughs> I mean, once you run the certificate, it's gonna be easy because you just um, go to the website yeah. and you accept. Yeah. Patch. You're always very didactic, actually. Yes. But you need to go through this step. But once you have it uh, working, just have this one line. You just run it, and then you're gonna create a branch for you, and that's it. And then you just build. So here's the change he did. Blah 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 blah. I don't really actually I do I don't know about you Pablo but I often don't do just the arc patch no what do you I do? do arc patch and then no branch ah to not have a different branch yeah and sometimes no commit even ah even better so it's because you still want to test something I didn't know that actually very nice thank you cool I just installed the arcanist by the way it's a good thing that I didn't do it live because it was gonna give me a token that everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, let's uh, let's go back to to the nineties, to the eighties. Okay, so um, how are you, by the way? Is it getting like oh, it's one hour ten already? <laughs> Is it okay? Are you are you tired? Me, I'm fine. You're fine. Okay, let's let's go move on. I'm not gonna use an excuse to to to, <laughs> to, to not stop work. the stream. No, no, no. I am actually having a fun time here. And uh, I mean, it's coding. People are probably going to be used to watch to like understand that this, this stream is going to be longer. Um, next uh, question. I would really like to contribute to Blender. Is there an UML diagram describing the whole architecture of Blender? No, there's not. That was there's an easy not. question. We have, we, have a few <laughs> we have a few diagrams for very specific areas. So Depth Graph has a very nice documentation. The whole file structure DNA is a good, has some diagrams. If you don't notifications, anyways, we have a few of them, but, but not something that goes from the big picture all the way to the granular picture. Sorry. Okay. Um, from the chat, where should I look if I want to read code related to the user interface? That is inside the interface folder in editors, if I'm not wrong. Right? Mm -hmm. You're super correct, Pablo. Yes, I've been playing with this so much. Basic. I'm showing it here, don't worry. It's um, so source blender editors interface. And then here you can break your blender so much by... Oh, interface. I thought he meant the Python files. Ah, ah, the other Python file. Yeah, well, depends. Well, I guess he was... We were looking at the, the, the C side. Python, yeah, they are in side of the blender source so you have to go to uh no not source sorry yeah the blender source and then you go to release scripts and then in scripts you're gonna find startup blui and then inside of blui you have everything like properties data armature for all the data physics render um the space the this one are all for each one of the editors um, for example, space node is for the node editor. Outliner is very tiny, um, but if you want to see it, basically all, everything here is, is here. Um, that's it. So that was for Python. But if you want to actually see the in, like the buttons, you want to change how the buttons look in Blender. You have you can do that from the source Blender editors interface interface widgets C. And here you're gonna have a blast because you can change how Blender works. You know, you want your buttons round. Well, now you can change the roundness, but before you have to go here. Uh, it is awesome. I don't know. I, I spent so much like this little thing is here. It's, uh, it's like the the circle scrolling or like the arrows or like I don't know. It's funny. Uh, all right, let's move on. How many more questions are there? Um, how Python and C++ operate and how links are made to each other, between each other? Yeah, it's usually via us. So we can actually have a whole program written in C++ and you can actually build, for instance, a DLL or a, the equivalent in Linux and Mac. Yeah. And you do it and then from Python, you can call, use the Python model called C-types to access it. So we, we do C++, but we have like a C API kind oh. of interface and then you can it have very uh, specific objects you can access and functions you can access and this is how i did the the original blender vr add-on prototype 
So the whole thing was in C++. Yes. Because we had to link the different SDKs and it was very convenient to do it. But then from Blender, we do C type to actually call the C++ functions. Thank you. Next, uh, how is Blender? Okay, let's do five more questions. So we call it a day because then we also save questions for the next episode. Oh, and also cool. because we are one hour 15. And uh, okay, it's five more questions. Uh, how is Blender tested currently? Are there unit tests, integration, end-to-end -end tests? We have a different, uh, few different kind of tests in Blender. It's not very extensive in its coverage. And it's, it's not... Uh, so we have a few unit tests. We have a few rendering tests. Unit test is the, the generic name, right? So we, we cover some of the rendering with this, some of the drawing. So for EV and, and, and cycles. We have a few core kernel functions also covered with these. We have BMesh as well, which is the... Blender Mesh. The Blender Mesh infrastructure. And we have... We are going to have a Lambic, which we don't have yet. We have seen some very basic Lambic IO tests. Uh, Brecht was mentioning that we could do it, could extend it a bit further. But a lot of the testing is still done manually. So when it comes to test production files to, uh, in different releases, we still have to open manually the sh open shared files, which can compare. Is this, is, this is not a... That is in a different repo. It's not in the Blender code. The, the, the tests, as I mentioned, they're all in the Blender code. Thank you. How, how are add-on tested? Are they even tested? They're not. No, they're not. They're not. They're not. Next question. Have you guys? Well, they, they could. They could be. They could because you do have Python tests, and they, they could easily call the add-on the add-on operators, of course, not the UI server. Um, this question: Have you guys considered hiding for rigging and animation modules? In the past streams, you have mentioned that they lack developers, so why not hire one or two? <laughs> uh, well, we do have we do have plans to still like no go back and forth the whole animation 2020 project where we definitely require new uh, rigging and uh, animator developers but that depends on funding depends on having yeah. the right partners to actually also define the goals and also it's very hard to find a developer that can just directly jump into coding bl for blender usually the people that get hired is people that already like like dig around the blender code a bit maybe propose a patch or two and then uh you you get hired i mean it's our google summer of code students it's a very yeah, they're really good uh, candidate from. yes really good candidate we get really good people like hans goody who is in it again same world it's kind of nice yeah. around. well sergey came out of the google summer of code and then kind of made a whole new editor <laughs> sergey uh sebastian Bachis. Ah, uh, yes, it was. Mantaflow. In no. a way, technically, Julian, Iso, but Julian was involved before, of course. Nobody needs to know that. <laughs> Next question. Uh, so that was for number, question number three. I've been using Houdini alongside Blender for some quite some time now. I recent, recently started to write a bridge in C++ to use Houdini assets as modifiers. It works great, but I'm having an issue with how I could share with others. Is there a way to write C++ extensions without having the end user build it from source? No, there's not. No. At the moment, there's no way to have a plugin that's a C++ based thing, Blender. C++ that plugins, changed, yeah. Yeah, that, that changed the Blender. For instance, there's no way to, what he, what he or she, I don't know. But they want is to create a modifier in a way that they can just share the modifier as a plugin. We can't at the moment. Uh, no. no, not at the moment. So you need to like make the patch and put it in on the review but it's really very generic it can't be just a Houdini patch or something I guess um, if, no, the, if the person just wants to share they can just also just share the, the code the code yes um, next uh, of course I would provide different binaries per blender version yeah and the code because it's you shared it's needs mm -hmm. to be open source next um, that was three sec number two, two. It's a collection. So, do you plan to refactor the Paintbrush engine's code? More generic code could be shared for the Paint, Vertex Paint, Grease Pencil, and even Scott. That's there what... is a lot of shared code uh, already. already. I don't know. I don't know if there's ever plan to to, ex to share the code to that extent. Grease Pencil is still very unique in a lot of ways, and but uh, definitely Pablo Dobar is working on that on, on 
we call the brush engine, right? To have a more robust brush engine that can be used for texture painting, that can be used for vertex painting within sculpting mold, that can be used for sculpting mold. So we can use the same brush in a different different editing modes. Yeah. And then I saw that the Settlers project, right? I think it's not a code related uh, question. Is that 2D mouse on a 3D body, Chris Pencil? Is there any code implementation ideas to add a way to bake the Grease Pencil render frame to a texture and project it? No. No, there's, there's uh, Antonio Vasquez is working on the Grease Pencil baking. Have yes. you seen that, Pablo? Uh, well, I, crazy. I, I uploaded the video on Blender it's developers. Crazy. It's amazing. <laughs> so in the Blender developers YouTube channel, you can find a, a work in progress of a tool that basically converts a mesh like the wires into strokes, grease pencil strokes, and the materials into fills. So you end up with, um, yeah, I don't know how fast this is, but it's like a land PR kind of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the other way around of the, the person wanted the other way around, but still it's a... <laughs> ah, like a grease pencil to mesh. That shouldn't be that hard, says the non-developer. Anyway, check it out on the Blender Developers YouTube channel, which is not this YouTube channel, it's the other developers YouTube channel. Very clear. And the last question is, uh, I'm really gonna ask a quirky question today. I'm thinking about switching to Linux, but all those distributions of Linux, choosing one from it feels like a big piece of puzzle to crack. Yeah, it must be very confusing because everybody says that their Linux version is the best, which yeah, is not to... the case. <laughs> Try to decide how much, how many megabytes, how many gigabytes you need for your home directory, and then for your root directory. No, you don't have to do that. Local. You don't have to do not that. Not anymore, can... but back in the days it was. Ah, back in the days. Now, nowadays it's fairly simple. The thing is that people will still say that their distribution is the best, and I disagree with that. I think you should go on YouTube, see how people are using their own like different distributions. Try KDE, Ubuntu. Uh, Pop OS, um, Xubuntu, Luuntu, whatever, Ubuntu, all their own versions, and see which one you like the most. They're all pretty much the same under, like which one? Which ones have you? Actually they're all used a problem? headache. Huh? Which which uh, Linux versions you used? Linux distribution. I used. Uh, I used yeah. Ubuntu since 2006. Then I moved into Pop OS, which is basically Ubuntu with a with a bunch of things on top to make it a bit better and I'm, I'm basically just stuck with that I started with Mandrake maybe in Mandrake Mand I don't know how Mandrake Mandrake I said it in Spanish in 2000 maybe 2 or 3 but just playing just, it looked cool and I wanted to use it then I used Windows XP and then when, when they added Vista when they changed to Vista I was like I'm not using this thing and I moved to Ubuntu 2006 Nice. And uh, since then, I think well, which ones have you used Linux versions? Uh, nowadays is Ubuntu mainly, and I'm using Pop OS in the office just because the sysadmin we have said that this is the version he would maintain. So okay, that's that's all I need. If there's a version that's gonna make you, they're gonna make me not worry about that. That's my favorite ver uh, version of Linux. I still prefer Ubuntu over Pop OS, to be honest. Really. Yeah, just because it's easier to find documentation and I couldn't get it's the, the desktop icons to work in it's Pop OS for me. Ah, oh, okay. But when I, I mean, I don't look for documentation for Pop OS. I look how to or do Ubuntu. this in Ubuntu, how everything Ubuntu, because it's the same. It's just... No, 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 in theory, yeah. But in theory. for me, the desktop is not working. It doesn't matter. But then mm -hmm. I think I used um, a Red Hat. I used a Slackware. I've used... Connectiva Linux, which was a version of uh, Red Hat. Connectiva. I use one thing that was a, ver, a version of Kinopix. I forgot the name now. It's a Kurumi. Kurumi. It's, what, it's supposed to fit in a mini disk. Oh, yeah, I remember which one. Yeah, Kinopix. Uh, and they're really focused on, on localization. So it's like a few like, in there. So that was the first question. Which distribution of Linux do you use? Then the second question, which we might say different things, I don't know. It says, do you really like Linux or rather Mac OS or Windows? I gotta say, I really like uh, Linux. I'm, uh, I'm that guy, sorry. But you, a big, uh, well, also I've never used Mac seriously. I used it for a few 
days for work or maybe a month one month use i think we yeah, have one month um, but i also use last year i used windows for one month and i was driving me nuts so i think it just comes to whatever you are used in my case i i prefer i never really try mac for real maybe i'm, I'm curious about that one no I, I honestly my answer is i prefer not have to worry about the os i prefer if i'm using as nvs code it should work everywhere if i'm using blender it just works everywhere even yeah. uh that, Unity that's, nowadays works everywhere. that's why i would like to use uh to try a mac but la too bad that mac sucks with everything that is like uh, with blender well too bad that it's not that blender sucks on mac is that mac sucks on blender because they don't support the yeah OpenGL properly and you know, on the drivers and stuff but um I, I would i'm curious about about using it i'm curious about some apps like what would have happened in my life if i would have had freedom to use any app i want even if they're not open source um i i, I like mac a lot and i recommend and i still use the mac keyboard to this day i have a mac since, keyboard. since the first time i use it i used it in 2015 i think i don't know yeah for a project and like I found love said I, I and I start using this for even on Windows even on Linux so they, well, they still do they used to at least do a good hardware cool so at least we don't we agree that Windows is a no-no what OS does artists <laughs> use and developers use at the Blender HQ at the Blender HQ everybody uses Linux except mm, Francesco <laughs> and and Sebastian Sebastian Banish oh, ah he's using what Mac he has he has Mac Linux and Windows there Oh, okay, but it makes both, sense. Both for development reasons, just because we need someone to develop. Sergey loves, loves. Sergey likes to develop on Windows a lot as well. Sergey. Home, yeah. But he has a Mac. Yeah, but he has a throughput. I know at home he he does a uh, Windows development. Why would he get um um I don't know. I mean, if you like Windows, uh -huh. you should you should build yourself a beefy computer, not use a. I don't know. I have Windows here. I use for development every now and then as well. And. Uh, Okay, that's it. That's all. But I think that's the end of the question. And we are in like one and a half hours. So it's good to say goodbye. It's good to say. It's never good to say goodbye. <laughs> hey, why not? <laughs> Speak for yourself. I'm glad to say goodbye. Say goodbye. So we can say hello tomorrow again. Tomorrow, 6 p.m., uh, 5 p.m. I'm going to be interviewing the guys over. Well, that was the idea. The guys from Settlers. And actually, I should have talked with Francesco before saying this. <laughs> because I say that they are there. But the thing is that I also have to make the recap video for the Blender. What happened during this week. And I I, I need time for that. But if I also have to prepare a live stream, it's going to be tricky. Okay. Might get delayed. Last week, I published it on Saturday. Maybe I can do this the same. Thank you, Lalai, for staying until the end and hanging out and showing all your Blender coding shenanigans. It's funny how at first I thought there'll be not a there'll be nothing to show and it would be I don't know, and now I can think about so many things that could be could have been covered. Everything, like all the module, like there's just one little module. How the user yeah. interface, the I don't know where um, physics is, where constraints are, where objects were. Um, the drawing, drawing edge. Where is the 3D viewport? Where is the 3D viewport, for example? Where is the? I want to have. I want to switch. Uh, first space viewport. I want to switch the Y axis for the Z axis, for example. Somebody comes and then you show how <laughs> much of a nightmare that is because you basically everywhere in Blender, it's uh, assuming that it's one axis or the other. So if if you look, if you search really, really hardly, you can find a post. One of my first ones in Blender Artists, which I had my brother translating to me. Wow. which was how to change the blender grid spacing because i was doing some urban planning design and the spacing was just not enough and then i was specifically asking where in blender can i change it and then someone actually replied and but at the time at least it was something in relation with also the zoom level so i actually could change it without having to change the blend code <laughs> it's kind of nice to have those very specific how they change That's very specific why. Awesome. Well, uh, people are seems in the chat. They should say that they would like to have a Blender coding once a week. That would be pretty nice. So well, maybe we can fun as well. maybe we can make it happen. Leave a comment, please. Once the live stream is over is uh, off, please leave a comment so then we can we can measure it there. 
Um, because it means that if we do a, a coding week uh, day, then we can do something else. And you can't code if you're going to do it, but maybe another developer can't code during that week, that day. Um, so, you know, it's like taking time from developers. That's what I said. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. The, tax, uh, pay, the taxpayers <laughs> or the Blender fund members uh, maybe don't like it. I don't know. Anyway, thank you once again. I will... Um, I was just say goodbye. I think we can just say goodbye together, but you, you can't listen to the music, unfortunately. Um, but I know the music. You know the music. Okay. Oh, maybe I can put it in the speakers, and this will be smart enough to show it. Anyway, so five, four, three, two, one. Banana papa. Hi there. <laughs> Banana papa. I forgot the right time. <laughs> Anyway, thank you, Dalai. Thank you, community. See you again, same place, same time, for another Blender thank you, Pablo. every day. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Ciao. <laughs>